Hey there. Today, I'd like you to show the single sign-on features on the perspective of the white label partners that own an instance of Virtly. So if you own an instance of Virtly and the single sign-on is enabled on your instance, you'll see now that you're gonna have here the single sign-on uh, section on the admin part. You can give rights to have this section on the admin users uh, management tool. So if you don't have it, you can uh, assign it to your own user or to anyone on your team to manage it. And what this feature and what this section allow you to do is to authorize certain domains to use the single sign-on feature. So everything on the single sign-on is based on the domain. So for example, we have configured already the virtually.com domain on this instance, meaning that if you want to enter with a single sign-on using, if you have an email at virtually.com, you will forcedly use the, the single sign-on configuration. So if you want, one of your customers want to have a single sign-on uh, feature or enable it for their own domain and organization, you'd first need to create their domain here. So let's create the um, a domain demo sso.com for example it's a fake one but you can create one for your organization you can have the status draft active or suspended it will only work if it is active but uh, you can for example if you are preparing it and giving it to your uh, customers while it's not yet configured so that there's no impact on the front end you can keep it in a draft mode and then you can configure it so let's do that and then you can also uh, assign someone as an administrator of this single sign-on domain. You know that you can add several uh, uh, several emails and the users that connect with this email, they will see it on the, as a configuration on their interface. We'll show it in, a, in another video, uh, the perspective of the administrators of the single sign-on. You can already say that you want to enforce the single sign-on for this domain or not. If it's not selected, which is the default behavior, everybody that is connecting with this domain, with an email that has this domain, will be forced to go to, through the single sign-on. If you select this one, either you or the administrator of the single sign-on domain, this means that the users that have an email at demo.sso.com, they will still be able to log in with the email. Also, please note that for each connection, there's an extra cost. So contact us if you want to know more details about the pricing of the single sign-on. And this is charged by domain per month and doesn't have any relation with the amount of events that are using this single sign-on. So I've saved this one and it's in the draft mode. And this step is the first step in order to configure the single sign-on for your customers. So you need to create it here and then assign the administrator email to the organize to the to your customers, and then they will be able to configure the, the, the details of the domain. If you want to manage or to see how the domains on your instance are configured, you can always uh, come through this uh, interface and edit what exists there. You can change the settings, of course, and you can also open the single sign-on portal. By clicking here, this would allow us to open the, the portal that we are using for the single sign-on. And that portal is using WorkOS. And I will show it in the in the other demo how this works. And now you can see who how the domains are being used or who is connecting with this domain. Great. So hope this will explain how the first step of the single sign-on configuration works. And just check the other video that we will present the part of the administrators of the domain which you will be using on the single sign-on domains under the account settings. Thank you.